Red Ray Gun Limited presents The Benji and Nick Show Hello Hello Good morning Good afternoon Good evening Good day Good afternoon Good night Good morning You've been, you're repeating yourself Nobody, nobody said that you couldn't do that I'm trying to. Ch- I'm tr- look. I'm trying. I'm trying with this game. I'm trying to find the flaws so that we can work out how to play it properly. Nobody said. That's the whole basis of the game. You have to think of something new. We didn't say it because it's obvious. I mean, nobody says the sun comes up in the morning, but it's obvious. Is it obvious though? Not if you're on the moon. <laughs> Not if you're on the moon. That was uh, Loch Ness. You haven't said goodness, or we oh, haven't said okay. Loch Ness. Goodness. Loch Ness, thank you. You're very welcome. That was the Loch Ness game. Um, no, no, you say that bit, don't you? Oh, well, we're changing it up, Benji. <laughs> that was the Loch Ness game. Uh, it's not a game, yeah. and it's yeah. not about Loch Ness. But this is the Benji and Nick Show, the podcast about vintage television. We listen to television from the past, sometimes television from the future, and we listen to it so you don't have to. We give you, we rock and roll, we <laughs> can't remember what rubbish you say. <laughs> we riff, we jam, riff, I don't we know. We riff, we jam, something like that, yeah. <laughs> so we old, rock and roll. We rock, that, that, does, that does sound exactly like something I would say, though. <laughs> We rock and roll, we riff, we jam, we stroll, we ride. Uh, And I'm not Benji. And I'm not Nick. Now today we are talking about uh, the 80s uh, show Kinvig. Was it 80s? Early 90s, 80s, I'll find out. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's a comedy That's... written by Nigel Neal, the creator of Quatermass. 1981. So su- 1981. Yeah, so surprising. He hadn't written comedy before and never did again. Who knows why? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, funny we'll be that. discussing that later with uh, Shelley Dean, our reviewer from Over the Seas, uh, who doesn't have knock knees. Uh, <laughs> specifically because it doesn't rhyme. It does rhyme. Um, but before that, we'll be... Um, looking at some emails sent in to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com which is the email address for this podcast um yeah so that's what we'll be doing when shelly comes on she'll tell us more about kinvig and she'll also tell us about our patreon page which she won't tell us because we already know about it but patreon as you know is a way uh you can give patronage to certain um podcasts you can patronize us <laughs> you can patronize us for free it just helps show you support the podcast keeps us doing what we're doing helps us to to keep the podcast alive and there are all um, sorts of extras anyway shelly will t- tell you all about that when she, she says you just wait for shelly she's yeah, best yeah. Yeah, she knows. She knows. So, she knows. She knows. Well, if you want to send us an email, all you have to do is send it to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com and it will yeah, get so. read out. Last week we set out these stipulations, didn't we? Which is that I believe I'm, I'm to give somebody their own round of applause, but I can't remember yes. what the clause of that was. What was the clause? The first person to write in. So, who, who was the first person to write in? Well, I don't know, but it's probably this one. Isn't I've got it? Tim Smith here. Yeah. Tim, I believe you, you get your own round of applause. So, without further ado, um, I hope you. I hope you're watching. If you are or listening, but here we go. There we go. There we go. I, I would say that was a hearty round of applause. I, th- I think your hands hurt after that. Possibly. I used to think that if you cup your hands and clap, you get a louder, a louder one. You know. There we go. Well, Tim Smith, uh, he sent this email on the uh, 9th of the 5th, 2021, the year of our Lord, 1856. Uh, there is no subject. Oh, the subject is Benji Nick Show. Um, oh, it says here, Hello, signed. Benji, Shelley and Nick. Uh, thanks for putting me right a few episodes back on You Fool, You Old Fool. <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. Uh, I was checking whether or not you've ever done a podcast on Jonathan Creek. How have we not done a podcast on Jonathan Creek is what I want to know. Um, I mean, does it qualify? I suppose it does. I mean, we did Cracker and Crackers around that. What, did we really? When was the I first Jonathan? Now. I love Jonathan Creek. Um, it's the nineties, wasn't it? It's was the nineties. I mean, um, Jonathan Creek. Yeah. How was the first episode in nineteen ninety-seven? Wow! I really thought it was earlier. I really thought it was. I earlier. I thought so. I was working at the Sci-Fi Channel at the time. And uh, Alistair was McGowan that? was in the first episode, and everyone said it thought it was me. Everyone at the Sci-Fi Channel <laughs> thought it was me. 
Yeah, I didn't know you were in Had it all day. People going, I saw you in that new show on BBC One on Saturday. <laughs> no, it's not. I wish it were me, but it wasn't. <laughs> I, wish, I wish it was. But of course, you know, Jonathan Creek, fantastic stuff with so many good assistants. You know, mm, Caroline Smith. Caroline Quentin, Sheridan Smith, Julia Sawala, um, uh, Sarah Alexander. Um, Rick Mail was in it as well as a reoccurring character. Adrian mm. Ebenson as well. Awesome. Awesome. Um, mm. Oh, makes you want to watch it. Of course, Anthony Head as well. He's uh, he plays Adam Klaus in the first episode. Does he? Uh, always remember that Adam. I think after that you don't see him, but he's always part of it. But yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do that next time. Who knows? Um, no doubt, the show that inspired a thousand one articles and bookies alike, fanning the flames of Alan Davies being the next Doctor. Oh, the amount <laughs> of times, yeah. That every, that every, it was like every article, wasn't it? The next Doctor it always had a picture of Alan Davies. But, but, but of course, just because he had curly hair, yeah. like Tom Baker, which is the, uh, Andy Soul's mysteries in this. That's pretty much. He it. was asked uh, about it. I think Jonathan Ross on the Jonathan Ross show asked him about it a lot. Or so. I remember him being put on the spot on a chat show about are you going to be the next Doctor Who are you going to be Doctor Who and all this and he's going no 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 <laughs> okay, no. but are you that no <laughs> did they he... ever ask you mm, he wouldn't say whether he'd been asked of or course not, he'd been he asked. asked but yeah no it would have been good I mean would it have been right I don't know I don't think he's who quite knows? Doctor Who crazy character but he's great in the, he's great in in uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Creek. Creek. Also, a Caroline Quentin doctor, for that matter. Well, I yeah. think she'd be fab. I love Caroline Quentin. She yeah. makes me laugh. Always loved her to bits. Uh, cheers, Tim. P.S. Go on, Nick, and do that Michael Wisher Vogel impression again. Just quickly, please. Can anyone hear me? <laughs> Can anyone hear me? <laughs> Anyway, yes. Um, next message is from our favourite, uh, Thomas Hodden. It was sent on the 10th of May uh, in the year of our Lord, 1006. Good year, good year. the Norman invasion. Thomas Hodden, yes. Grumple Pants is the title. <laughs> of course of it is. Email. Even in all, I wonder if you or your listeners have seen the current fight for recognition by Starfleet ratings who have filed personal injury claims and wondered if you might consider signing the attached petition. We hope to lay down such pressure upon Starfleet that they immediately address the following concerns. One, a complete lack of seatbelts on the Enterprise, despite the number of injuries to crew members having been thrown about the ship and into bulkheads on a weekly basis. Two, immediate retrofitting of computers that don't explode into shower of sparks whenever they crash. Also a weekly occurrence. Three, although we can see why command might find it desirable to exile a sexually aggressive romantic predator to the most distant stars on a five-year mission. <laughs> They're talking about Captain Kirk. We should know that Admiral Kirk's success, in inverted commas, as a diplomat may be somewhat overstated, given how often his diplomacy involves assassins, fistfights, and teetering on the brink of war. Classic. Four... We demand the immediate replacement of red uniform shirts with camouflage and body armour. Give him a chance, yeah, too much. Yeah, right. for goodness sake. Five, please can we send the medical staff actual equipment as I receive constant reports of McCoy waving salt cellars <laughs> around instead of doing his job. If these changes are made, we believe the good people of Starfleet will be far safer in their jobs. But frankly, it seems improbable that a fully fledged inquiry would find the organisation remotely fit for purpose. Yours, T.E. Hodden. Thank you, T.E. Hodden. <laughs> Speaks the truth. Speaks the truth. Always, there. always. We've got one more here from Neil Allen. Uh, subject to this one. Are you going to say something, Nick? No. You're moving your lips and you go like that. Well, well, so uh, it's a free country. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> this one's from Neil Allen. Subject this one is, what are you listening to? Sent on the 13th of the 5th, 2021. It's like moving my lips and not speaking. Yeah, That's you, really you weird. Sort of, yeah, you sort of just we got going, a mouth breather here. You just sort of doing... And <laughs> I was, the I was, sound had gone? But I was, no, I was thinking that you were like trying to interject to like say oh, no. like, no, 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 we have one more. But no, <laughs> clearly, clearly you didn't. Well, um, I was just going... 
<laughs> you were. You were. Yeah. Um, this was said on, in the year of our Lord, 1754. Um the year I believe that <laughs> he's just doing it again now. Uh, <laughs> afternoon, Benji and Nick. Your last pod was about what you were watching on TV. I was yes. wondering, as two of Britain's leading podcasts, do you listen to any podcasts produced by other podcasters, or are you so dedicated to the Loch Ness game that any podcast not opening with a Loch Ness head-to-head just <laughs> doesn't cut the mustard? Oh. Uh, here are four of my own favourites. Um, I've got more, but I'm limiting my list to four. Okay. Uh, degree of absolute uh, American prisoner podcast. Some really interesting theories a, a about the degree new... absolute. Should it oh. be decree absolute? Anyway, come on. Uh, some really interesting theories about the meaning of uh, Patrick McGowan's classic series. Wow, mm. that's cool. I was thinking it was for a moment. I was thinking it was an American prisoner podcast. I just thought it was going to talk about like various prisoners or something. I didn't <laughs> put two and two together until I saw Patrick McGowan's name. Vintage television, isn't it? John Jones was a, a serial library book stealer. Um, Get on with uh, it, Mr. Menry. Oh, 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 stop it. Uh, Brett and Cliff's oh, Flea oh, Circus. Two remember. guys from Sunderland talking about classic TV and film and loads of other great subjects. Oh. I can just about get talking about football stuff thanks to the information I get from their great podcast. Yeah, oh. Knowledge is king for us footballless folk. Knowledge is king. Uh, in the archives with Peter Fleming. Uh, Peter is a children's TV producer trying to track down copies of his TV work from rather dubious past. From uh, his, his rather dubious past. That too. Uh, yeah. His latest podcast was about Bagpuss, Ivy the Engine, Nog in the Nog, and other Oliver Postgate creations, making a very violent visit to the Herbs and Parsley the Lion. Doesn't I'm a well very for... friendly lion called Parsley. Well, apparently it doesn't That's... end well for him here. It doesn't end oh. well for him. Postman Pat... Uh, or Trumpton, uh, very very funny. You know, my mm. friend. Here's a here's a really Benji and Nick show thing. Actually, my friend James was. Um, he messaged me and he said he's a teacher at college, mm. and apparently his students were saying that it's it's pronounced postman Pat, and he was like it's postman Pat. They're like no, it's not. It's postman Pat, and they kept saying it's the postman, and he was saying it's the postman. They're not the postman. It's the postman. Totally, yeah. Toast. P- postman. I think Toastman. I think they were winding him up. Yes. Um, Clearly. Like my dad wound me up. Um, what was it? Uh, when I was watching Lost in Space once, there was an episode that had Sleeping Beauty in it, uh, and of course the, the and the Americans call it sleep. My father kept saying it's Sleeping Booty and not Sleeping, <laughs> sleeping Beauty. Booty. And I said, well, it's Sleeping Beauty. And he said, well, I can't say Sleeping Beauty. I can only say Sleeping Booty. I said, well, you just said it then. <laughs> no, I didn't. I can't say Sleeping Beauty. I can only say Sleeping Booty. <laughs> I've told several people that, and they've tried it out with their kids, and it drives them up the wall because the kids don't get that they're being wound up, you see. Have you done it to Ben yet for, uh, when he was younger? I did. Yeah, I did do it with Sleeping him. Be- I did it with booty. several words, actually, saying, oh, I can't say it like that. And I'd say I can't it. Say no, raspberry. you, you I just said it. Raspberry. <laughs> I can only say that in a northern way. Um, iPodivs. Two Americans talk about their love of I, Claudius. Oh, it's great goodness. to get an American perspective on some of the UK's best actors. Plus, Patrick Stewart makes a guest appearance as Patrick well. Patrick Stewart makes a guest appearance? Uh, mm. Thanks, and as the same goes... Patrick Stewart voice. It sounded like someone who's being strangled. Patrick. Yeah, can I do Pat... Make it so. (laughs) Make it so, everybody. Make it so. Hello. (laughs) It's Miss Piggy. The original double bill. Um, (laughs) Thanks, uh, saying a variety is the spice of life. It certainly is. uh, From Neil. Do we listen to podcasts? Um, I... I would say I listen to maybe one podcast. Not uh, regularly, Lily? Yeah, regularly, uh, which is... um, uh, Chris Jericho podcast. Time, is it? What's it called? Time is Jericho. Time of Jericho. Can't remember. Um, what's that about then? Uh, you wouldn't like it, Nick. It's about pro wrestling. Um, I wouldn't like it. Correct. But Next it's interesting. Question. He gets he gets people and talks about their like their careers, which I quite yeah. like, and just hearing about the business and like some of the stuff like that. Um, I don't think I regularly listen to another podcast. I mean, I have dipped in like um, um, Frank uh, Skinner's poetry podcast, which I've listened to a couple of episodes on. So it's really good because he's just very down to earth about poetry and there was once uh, our friend Scott Hancock has done about uh, the experience of being a gay man and it actually and he interviews people and it's absolutely fascinating you know about the sort of prejudice and and, and what have you it's it's an, and really interesting observations fascinating 
Yeah, it's good that you know that's the beautiful thing about podcasts. You know, is is that I often find myself doing things like I'll I'll be thinking of something and I'll be like, oh, I wonder if there's a podcast about that. Like if I'm on a hmm. wall, and so I, I I sometimes go down the rabbit hole of sort of educating myself on random things. Well, it's about um, time, isn't it? Well, you know, I, I don't know a lot about the world. I'm a very sheltered individual. Um, very sheltered. I, I don't, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, I'm sure you'll agree, I spend such a, a, a vast amount of my time listening to voices from people, you know, work-wise yes. and, and all that, that I, I often just, you know, I just don't want to listen to any more voices. I'll just listen yeah. to like, music and stuff, um, which I do a lot. I bought some great records the other day. Did you? What did yeah, you get? yeah. Got a bit of um, I got some Dire Straits, mm. a bit of Simply Red, Julian mm. Lennon, uh, a mm. bit of Bob Marley, Heat Wave. Heat uh, Wave, what's that? Yeah, it's like this eighties funk band. It's pretty good. It's pretty so, good. For, so far, I wouldn't really be keen on listening to any of those. Yeah, I don't know if it's up your Bob street. Bob Marley a bit, uh, yeah, but I'm not. Yeah. Rave, rave 1992, Nick. That's up your street, isn't it? <laughs> I could see see you after a few ghost dinners going for it. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, <sighs> good fun, good fun. But there we go, that's that's it. Oh, I do like uh, Critical Role. That's good as well. That's a What's great that? podcast. It's a um, Dungeons & Dragons thing. A bunch of voice actors get together and, and play Dungeons & Dragons. But the guy who, who uh, orchestrates it, a guy called mm. Matthew Mercer, and he is just the most incredible storyteller. He's really? so good. Oh, he's amazing. Well, he started, you know, that Dungeons and Dragons is now like a huge franchise because of this mm. podcast. Because oh, really? these guys started it. People thought, well, this is fun because you don't know how the story. It's not planned story. You know, it goes. He, I mean, he plans it in a, in a way, but the people react. You know, the actors react in character in wow. real time to what's going on it's fab it's just so good and yeah now Hasbro have brought, have bought the Dungeons and Dragons franchise and so it's a huge big deal but I love okay. that that's great so there we go um, obviously you want to listen to the Benji and Nick show as your number yeah, one choice the big finish podcast, podcast as well, as well. But yeah. yeah oh yeah that as well yeah, 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 yeah. I've listened to a couple of drama podcasts now and again odd episodes and stuff but yeah, yeah it's I mean, like you say I Hornblower. Hornblower. That's not a podcast, though, is it? No, that's that's yeah, that's that is just an audio drama, isn't it? That's good, though. Yeah. yeah. As I stood on the poop deck. <laughs> As I stood on the poop deck. Anyway, never mind. Um, I suppose it'd be time to invite uh, Shelley Dean in. Get her in. Hello. Hello. How's it going? It's going phenomenally better. I don't know. I'm just trying to. Jolly good. Well, that's good yeah. enough for me. <laughs> it's, it's not, he's not really listening to the answer no, anyway. Not. So it's, it yeah, it's, it's, it's an open. It's, it's, it's a rhetorical. It's a custom, isn't yeah. it? You know, how's it going? It's like in emails when, when people say, people say like, um, Hope you're well, and it's not a question mark. It's just a full stop. Yeah. And I think, oh, that's a that's a greeting, not a question. Mm-hmm. So I won't answer that. Yeah, I'm great. Thank you, massive essay about my life. <laughs> really, um, you want to know how I'm doing? <laughs> Sit down, boys. I've got yeah. lots to Sit say. Down. I'm gonna tell. <laughs> Here's a gonna... hundred pages. Hundred pages um, of my it's, life. It's great to have you here. It's what I'm to going hear to you say. nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's lovely to be here with you. And now Take those it away, form- formalities are out of the way. Yeah, girl but, with a hard girl. sell. Yes, yes. For this week's theme for the patron papers, I'm going with yes. hobbies. Because I know a lot okay. of people have picked up new hobbies during the pandemic. You know, people have been yes. bread baking, scrapbooking, things like that. Me, mm. I've got lots and lots of spare time. So what I've been doing is watching way way too much TV. Good TV, bad TV. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. It's as long as it's distracting me from the reality of everything, then it's great. So, did you guys start any new hobbies during the pandemic? Um, uh, did I start any new hobbies? Um, no, I've been too busy to no? do. Okay. Have I started any? Well, because you guys you're, through... you're remote oh, working, I know. so I've planted some vegetables. See, gardening. Oh, that's nice. That's there nice. There you go. There you go. Very, I mean, you know, it's 
it's not going to go well. <laughs> hey. And, I, and I've been, you know, uh, look, I mean, I've got a garden now, yeah. you know. Last you got to talk to them. You've got to be nice to them. So it'd be ridiculous. <laughs> So you play the music. That's what some people do play with the tomatoes. Music, yes. They, they can have them. water. You know, that's that's what they're <laughs> getting. Like at the bare moment, minimum. We're gonna I give them know. some water and some sunshine. <laughs> that's it. You're on your own. Grow, well, don't I've, grow. I've been told I've got to get some toma- tomato food for them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, uh, get, just get shove them in a grow bag. That'd be fine. All right. Well, in, I've got. I've already my my um, radishes, if you pardon the expression, have already started. You know, there's something clearly happening. Sprouting. Yes. Oh, we don't but want the, that. Yeah. The, Shun- carrot, the, the carrots and the broad beans and whatever the other thing was. There's no sign of them yet. Oh, okay. How long ago did you plant them? I can't remember. They they'll okay. turn up in the winter, then, won't they? Yeah. <laughs> some no, they some will. things they will. it's surprising. Yeah, it's they will. you just you think it's going to go one way, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, that didn't come when I thought it was going to, and now I have broad beans in December. <laughs> exactly, I, that. Well, yeah, exactly that. You know, you want to you want a good runner beans are the ones. Good old runner beans. No, because you have to put sticks up for them, and that's too much maintenance. Well, otherwise, well, don't you run for off. the tomatoes? We haven't got tomatoes. Didn't you just say they, somebody told you to buy tomato food? No, tomato food is is the, like a fertis, a fertilizer. A fertilizer. Fertilizer. <laughs> yes. ah. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. That just makes things grow. It's not for growing oh. tomatoes. Well, it is for growing tomatoes, but it's for okay. growing anything. That's so. that's what my mate Chris Griffin told me to All put right. on there. He says, well, you want to get some tomato assumed. food. You know what yeah. assuming does. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I've asked some of our patrons to share some of their new hobbies and or ways that they use their free time. And Carl Bate, he is an avid bird watcher. And over this past year, he has invented binoculars that have an audio translation program so bird calls can be instantly translated into English. Amazing. Amazing. Don't you always (laughs) want to know what the birds are talking, what they're saying to each other? Always. I think they're just shouting abuse at people walking past. Well, here's the thing. It turns out... (laughs) Tulsa! The birds are mostly just asking for some privacy from all of the creepy peeping bird watchers. Yeah, too (laughs) many of them. Too many twitchers. Yes. Creepy peeping. I just needed to say that again because it was fun to say. So... (laughs) Yeah, so uh, Nathan Martin, we know that he has been on a hunt for a certain bipedal ape-like creature in his spare right. time. Yes. And he wanted to share that he has been successful in locating Bigfoot. And wow. that the two of them have become best friends. Oh. Well, he needs to tell his Bigfoot shoe size. That'll well, be, here's the thing. Straight. For the record, Bigfoot likes to be called sassy which is short for Sasquatch. Sasquatch, yeah. 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 And his hobbies, since we're talking about hobbies, Bigfoot's yeah. hobbies, excuse me, Sassy's hobbies are long <laughs> walks in the woods and oh. weightlifting using tree trunks and large rocks. Oh, yeah. I've seen videos yeah. of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. bulking up. So, there's so a, now... There's a, great, um, there's a great person on Facebook called Sasquatch, uh, and it's just a bloke who wears a, a monkey outfit, uh, playing the saxophone in the middle of a wood. Oh, every, sax every si- squash. Yeah, sax squash. And he just plays the saxophone like every day. It's great, though. He just does it live. He just turns up and plays Baker Street, and then that's it. Great oh, that's, guy. Is he good? He's amazing. Oh, yeah. wow. He's, he's amazing. Does he really play Baker Street? Did I anticipate that beautifully? He does play were, you, were you just joining in? <laughs> no, he does play Baker Street. Sack squad. Carry on. I'll get him up. Carry okay, on. Well, okay, well, uh, James Roadhaver previously disclosed that he grows lemons in his bathtub for his lemonade oh, yeah. stand. He yeah. wanted us to he wanted to know let us know that he has added another fruit to his bathroom garden. Speaking of oh, gardens, yes. the infamous durian fruit. <laughs> Have you guys heard of the durian no, fruit? Is that like ragabata bata? What I, what I couldn't say last time. <laughs> Ruta, what was that? <laughs> Rutabaga. <laughs> what was it? Rutabaga. Rutabaga. For those of you yeah. not knowing what you were talking about. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Benji's holding up a video of sax, sax squatch. It's a man in a monkey suit playing, playing a, a saxophone, saxophone in the woods. For, for the avoidance of doubt. Fantastic. Yes, I couldn't say Rudebaker, could I? No, you, we, we were doing uh, TV dinners last week, and Nick yeah. was reading 
a recipe, and he just was trying to say rutabaga, and he was rutabaga. <laughs> I'd never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> and so we decided that that's a new uh, uh, villain in a Doctor Who story. My name Rutabaga. is Rutabaga the Merciless. <laughs> Rutabaga. Well, anyhow, the durian fruit is the fruit that is infamous for its disgusting smell. And it was described on Wikipedia because I needed to, to, to get some actual. I've never smelled it, so I needed to find out. It, quote, it, uh, the smell is described as evoking reactions ranging from deep appreciation to intense disgust. The smell is something like rotten onions, turpentine, and raw sewage combined. Ooh, nasty. So we're just going to have to take that and throw that into a recipe for TV dinners at some point. Yeah, shove it in a a pie or something. A rutabaga durian pie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the most recent updates I have on our patrons. Okay. If you want to write in to let us know of any new hobbies that you have started, go ahead and send those into podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Get them in. And one more thing before we head over to what we're going to be talking about today. I just want to say I'm not sure if most of our listeners know that immediately after we click stop on this podcast that we head right into another show that we call The After Party. It's true. It's where we keep this party going. We answer questions and cover topics suggested to us by our goodness and our Loch Ness tier patrons. And sometimes we even stick to the topic (laughs) without going off on something completely different. Rarely, but sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens, you know. (laughs) So if you want to join in on the fun, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Benji and Nick show for access to the after party and lots, lots more. Bingo, dingo, dongo. Yeah, and just what did to, you say then? What did so you bingo, say? Bingo, dingo, dongo. Yes. All oh, right, wow. just checking. That we Creepy got peepers. That. <laughs> um, uh, and I just want to to do a callback, which is what they call in comedy when you refer back to something you've already talked about. Uh, bad TV. What? Kinvig. Oh. Oh well, well, Nick, Nick enjoyed it. I'm just saying that. Say, oh, I can't believe it. Come on, I, tell us all about it, though. Tell us right. what it is Dreadful. for those who don't know. Dreadful. So, for those of you who don't know what Kinvig is, and I'm going to guess that's probably about 99 percent of the people listening. <laughs> Kinvig is a 1981 sci-fi <clears throat> comedy television series which ran for seven episodes. It was the only sitcom written by Nigel Neal, who was more famous for creating serious sci-fi shows such as Quatermass and its sequels. It was directed and produced by Les Chatfield with original music by Nigel Hess. And the show is the series focuses on lazy Des Kinvig, who runs an electrical repair shop. He's a sci-fi fanatic with a UFO-obsessed best friend. And then there's Miss Griffin, a customer with a complaint. Not only is this extremely angry woman very attractive, she might be otherworldly too. Or is she? Hmm. No now, one knows you... because they never freaking answered the question as oh. to whether he was dreaming it or if it was real. So, Yeah, because the idea is this woman comes yes. into his shop and he's never mended the key that he he's wants. He's never she fixed wants anything. No, he's, yeah, he and doesn't do anything. And why does she anything. keep coming back? He doesn't fix she... the key, yet she comes back, there's a hairdryer. She comes back, there's a suitcase. She comes back. Yeah. It's like, dude. He sucks at his job. Stop giving him things it's, to not it's do. It's because it's a joke, you see. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to put an in inverted commas and explain it. Um, uh, and then, of course, in the night, he finds a spaceship landed and he goes inside and she is actually... Um, Scantily clad alien it, woman. Yes, I mean, uh, <laughs> Prunella G, who played the part, was a very beautiful woman. Gorgeous. She's very good in both parts, yeah. actually. Uh, yeah. She's very different in both parts. And she says, I'll have to continue to be Mrs. Mrs. G. What, what's the name? Griffin. Griffin. It's Griffin uh, th- in the daytime and, you know, can't reveal my true identity. So you just have this situation where you're not quite sure whether Kinvig is imagining that. I think, what do we think? Do we think he's imagining yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're it's... just waiting to see what we said to say the opposite. No. Basically, I don't. I, I don't know. To, and and I'll anyway, be br- tell, I'll be tell brutally us all why honest. I, I don't care. Um, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> well, I know we were just going to do the first episode, but I ended mm. up doing all seven because I 
after the first one, I was like, I absolutely cannot remotely come up with an opinion until I know yeah. what the heck is going on. So I watched all seven of them. And admittedly, I probably zoned out for about 75% of that because it was yeah. just, it was it was ridiculous. Personally, my, my, my broad general I, opinion on this is it could have been good. The mm. actors were very good considering mm. what they had to work with. Yeah. Nigel Neal should just admit that he can't write comedy. Mm. And 100%. It could have been, it, the concept was, a, I, I really enjoyed the concept of it. I did. I yeah. loved the ambiguity of whether or not it was real or not. Was he dreaming? Was he, you know, was it whatever it was? But he just, it. the laugh track made me want to throw my device that I was watching it on, whether it was my iPad or my computer or the TV. <laughs> I just wanted to throw it yeah, up yeah. because it was like, yeah. the laugh track was like somebody would like pick up something and they'd be like, ha 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 ha. Why are they laughing? There's nothing. And they were, and that's a real audience, by the way. Oh they would have filmed my God, that they were just guffawing yeah. over the most innocuous. I think, nothing. I think they got them drunk. Yes. And it had a tremendous. <laughs> they were warm-up drinking man. the hooch that uh, he was drinking to tra- teleport himself to the alien planet. Like. Oh well, we don't. I know mean, about the, that. Thing is, the, the thing is, the thing that, that so. came to my mind when watching it is, in, and I, I just thought, and I don't often use this phrase, but I think this sums up. It was just pants. Like, yeah. like that is, it's like it's worthy of being called pants. It's just, it's just not very funny. It's just, and the thing is, and this, the, the concept is di- like it's a great concept. It's a great idea for a show. Like yes. you could really do it well. I'm, I think it was just, I don't think it was really executed that well. Um, I don't actually, you know, Tony Haygarth there, uh, Des Kinvig. Um, who is a great actor? He's done so many things. Mm, I don't actually think he was right for this. I just don't think he. I don't. I know that the kind of idea is the guy's not meant to be kind of not that charismatic, and you know he's a sort of just a bloke. But a buffoon. You know, I just feel like like there wasn't enough to pull you in. You know, you could have. It's it's the type of. Sh- I tell you what it is. It's the type mm. of show. If you put Nicholas Lindhurst in it. It would have been a massive hit because he just it would have been funny. I can't even sp- know who Nicholas no. Lintas is. So he, he's uh, an actor over here, really good actor, mainly does comedy um, stuff, really famous. Have you only ever heard Fools, oh, Only sorry. Fools and Horses and Goodnight Sweetheart? He, he did. Those were huge comedies in What's this country. What's his last name? Sitcoms. Lindhurst. Okay, Lindhurst. I'm going to look at to see if I know who where, where, he Funnily is. enough, the, the, the village where I was born, Lindhurst. Really? Yes. Really? There we go. But I, my, mom, know, I, my mom always says, he stole your name. Nicholas, yeah. <laughs> that could be your stage name, Nicholas Lindhurst. That would have been really... Well, the rest is history, as they say. You know, uh, but I think like, if it had like a lead like that, I think it would have worked a lot better. But it just, for me, for me, my favourite character was um, his mate. Was it played by Jolly Colin Jevons. Jevons. Yeah, John Jevons. Jevons, Jevons, or Jevons you it. But, you know, he was a great Jevons character Stevens. and he was good fun. Colin Jevons. But, Jim, he played yes. Jim Piper. You know, and he had all the best lines. He had, he had some really good gags in there. Uh, couldn't stand the the mumsy sort of character, the, his the wife. wife. The wife. Yeah, she that was found, very weird. Found it? her irritating and like a sort of pound shop, uh, a pound shop nanny whip sort of character. Who's um, nanny whip? You know, um, what's her name from uh, Blot on the Landscape? Oh, right. You, oh, yes. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> hmm, hmm. Julia McKenzie sort of pound shop version of her really hmm. uh, I don't know I, yeah it's just all the gear and no idea is what I would say it's got all, all the components to be to be hmm. funny and great great story but when it comes down to it it just doesn't doesn't perform really well I did enjoy it if, if, from a curiosity point of view but as I think I said to you Benji in a whatsapp message it definitely is a misfire Definitely. I mean, you know, it, this is not a successful endeavour. And the fact that it wasn't renewed, I mean, I don't know whether how many episodes there were meant to be in the series. It I couldn't feels... find any information on that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's sort of well known as being awful. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you have to look at the pedigree of the people. And Nigel Neal is an amazing writer. And, he you know, is. he did so. And he writes some funny things in Quatermass. I think that the single thing that is wrong with this. Uh, 
which would have been at the heart of the concept of it, and it would have been what Nigel Neal thought he was writing for, I assume, is that it is done as a studio-bound sitcom with a live audience. I think, controversially, I don't think this script is perfect at all, but I think if you took that script and you filmed it as a comedy drama with high production values, you know, on 35 millimeter or what have you, and didn't go for laughs all the time, if you if you just did it like that, I think it would stand up really well. I, I think agree. it would be really interesting. But it's the fact that they tried to make it a sitcom. They forced the comedy. They were yeah. telling you, this is funny, you must laugh at this. When a great- it wasn't funny yeah. it just it was yeah they were trying to play it like it was bang 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 laugh yeah. and there weren't those laugh lines it was just meant to be weird and idiosyncratic yeah. and the audience were you see because um who was the lead actor again i keep forgetting his uh, name tony hagarth, hagarth tony hagarth T- tony hagarth i think he'd been in a number of sitcoms before then so audiences would have known of, of him as a funny man right you know it's like my son thinks um uh Will Smith is really funny. He watched The Fresh Prince of Bel Air and mm-hmm. he's watched the whole series twice and he absolutely loves it. So when I said, Do you want to watch Independence Day? He went, oh, What is it? I said, I, I said, I bet you'll really like it. And he's got Disney Plus. So mm-hmm. I said, Come on, sit and watch that with me. We'll have a fun time. And then he realized Will Smith was in it. Ama- amazing. And every time Will Smith spoke, he just laughed. Even if Will Smith was saying something funny <laughs> or not, he thought it was funny because Will Smith's funny, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's an man, element yeah. of that, although. T- Tony Haygarth, Will Smith. It's not a good analogy, no. but um, I think the audience is laughing. Like, he's he's funny. He's funny, man. He's a bit fat. He's got podgy fat. Yeah, he's funny. He, whatever he does, and they and I think those actors were using little sort of tricks to get laughs. But it it wasn't written like that. Or if it was written to be funny like that, then it really was a failure. But it wasn't written to be funny like that. If it had been done differently, I think it would have worked as There's i say a, really... a full confession i think i have fond memories of it because prunella g is so absolutely gorgeous yeah well, she is, absolutely. and she is good she is well she and is her, a very her good actor. costume gets less and less as the series progresses does it really <laughs> by the end I, she's uh, literally in a bikini top and bottoms and that's possibly it. worth making it to the end did that's they, it really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did they think the ratings are falling just take more and clothes lots of off kissing he there's lots of them kissing so it's a kind of wish fulfillment yeah, thing. Yeah, oh, well, for yeah, I mean, it's definitely I the. I, I get where the idea of he. He has this marriage, which isn't a terrible marriage. She's got a very doting wife. It's not like she's this frigid, horrible yeah. woman. She's a woman who loves him. There's no doubt yeah, yeah. that his wife loves him. Um, and the dog. And Probably that loves dog, the dog cuddly. more. Cuddly. <laughs> Cuddly the dog. Cuddly. Uh, for, anyone, for anyone listening, she talks like this all the so, time. Oh, it just all irritating. Right, no, dear. she's irritating, but she's not like an old nasty bat who treats her yeah. husband horribly. Which him escaping into this whatever, whether it's a dream sequence or an actual transference into an, a spaceship or another planet. If only they could ask the dog, because the dog goes with the him. Dog, the dog would know. There's a really interesting no, hold on, point, no, Sorry, I, inter- I interrupted no, Shelley, just, and she was just, just about to land a point. The fact that he's escaping into this fantasy world of having this relationship with this super sexy woman, mm. and I just, I, f- I found that kind of offensive, because the marriage that they have on this you know that they're showing us isn't a bad marriage so it's just gross to me that this man is like oh i don't think my wife is attractive but this woman's really attractive so i'm gonna go and have this fantasy about her it's like but your wife loves you she's not a she doesn't treat you whore i don't know that's my own personal i i would say i would male fantasies sometimes get i would say that it's not (laughs) sophisticated enough really that to that that's a a factor it's just about it's just about a you know, yeah, but I chubby, would like to give it, Nigel Neal a little more credit than. Yeah, but it's rubbish. Don't give him any credit. <laughs> um, Peter that... Peter Nichols, who's a um, he's a creator and co-editor of the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction. Yes, um, he summed it up in, in my opinion with What's this quote, saying? which he said: um, "The scripts lacked the precision required for decent farce," and I yes. think that nails that sums it up perfectly. It just isn't. It's 
really, like you say, you know, Nick, it, it would work in other capacity, but for this, it just doesn't work. And that I just don't think it was. I don't think it was. I don't think it was sophisticated enough. Even the thing with the, the you know, with the wife situation. I just don't think there was even. It was just. An, it was just an idea. If you're just yeah. sitting around a table, in it, yeah. it's just. I think Nigel Neal was chancing his arm at doing something different, and I'd love to read anything that Nigel Neal had to say about it. Well, I can tell you, I found an amazing newspaper article that came out uh, September 6, 1981, so just Mm. before the series aired. So this is part of the promotion for it. Yes. He did did an interview with this newspaper reporter, and uh, it basically sums up why he wrote this, where he get got the idea from and I'm just going to read the quote uh, mm-hmm. Nigel Nigel Neal said what amused him was quote how UFO believers bolster up their convictions I picked up a few of those lunier paperbacks about flying saucers the people who write these wonderfully solemn accounts are saying something they know to be untrue it's the trick little children have in believing a thing and not believing it simultaneously and this seems mm-hmm. to be the basis of something very funny He remembers with quiet horror a sci-fi conference he was invited to attend. Quote, these sorts of things attract the t-shirt brigade and people dressing up in funny costumes. I suppose (laughs) that's harmless, but you felt it was a cheap show that knew itself to be cheap. So basically he wrote this to make fun of people who believed in UFOs. Yeah, I mean, that's clear. So, that whole thing with with evidence being presented mm-hmm. and them saying, you know, evidence that refuses. They say, yeah, you don't believe yeah. official stuff. It's yeah, that, the, it's the that. UFO landed on uh, the... the Pyramid. Uh, the, the pyramid, or no, it was uh, uh, Buckingham Palace's lawn. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> but but they're just covering it up, you know, so things like that. You can say that about anything, can't you? Yeah. You know, my house is actually an interdimensional gateway. The only reason you don't know about it is that the government covers has it up. covered it up. Yeah. Of is course. it really? Wow, I'm coming over. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, once you enter that realm of stupidity, you can claim anything. Right. And I think that I did detect that that was one of the points he mm-hmm. was sort of making. But I think it brought with it. I mean, the thing about you know the, the issue about his wife and the male fantasy thing. You know, those underwrote many stories told. This time, that that, that wouldn't have even been an issue at the time. It's yeah. just something you do. But uh, yeah, well, viewed that's from the perspective audience. now, you do. Yeah, and um, viewed from this perspective now, you look back and you think, yeah, actually, that is a bit dodgy, and you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't do it now, or you would do it, but you would address it. You know, why are you having this fantasy? What is wrong with your life? What is the matter with you? You know, yeah. she does care for you, but of course, comedy is often about unfair feelings and unreasonable behaviour, and I suppose that's the nature of it. I think. I still think that even with this, what seems to me like quite a mediocre script or set of scripts, I still think it could be done in a different way that would have actually made it really quirky and interesting. But but I think there's also the possibility that the actual conception of it is a little bit... There's not enough in it, is there, to sustain a series? I definitely feel like they were trying to be Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which came out like right before this did. And... You know, grabbing on to that kind of concept, which that might have been why they'd commissioned him to write a comedy. Right. Uh, a lot sci-fi. of sci-fi. There's we can't do sci-fi anymore, but we can do a sci-fi comedy because that's because look how now. good Hitchhiker's Guide has been doing, and yeah, uh, yeah. so and we'll, that makes we'll, a lot ITV, of sense. Yeah, we'll do it, and we'll get we'll get one of the biggest sci-fi writers right. there's ever been on TV. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And, so. and they offered him money, and he thought, well, I've never written a comedy, but I'll do it if you like. Because he was famously a bit of a miserable old so-and-so. Yeah. I mean, I've enjoyed every, you know, everything else that we've watched. You know, we watched Beasts. We watched Quatermass. And I actually, in the midst of watching this, I sat down and watched the Stone Tape, and which I had never seen before. Because fuck, I kind of wanted to get a little bit of a broader view of... Plenty of, of sexism in that. Uh, and racism. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But I, you know, I, that I, I really enjoyed that. That was really, that was. A, it's amazing. Yeah, it's a superb that was, that bit was of work. Really, superb really good. Um, so I, there's no doubt in Nigel Neal's ability to craft a good plot. There's okay. no doubt in my mind that he can do that. I just feel like you're right. It's for what ruined it for me was it was being fo- I was being forced to find it funny. 
And there were times I didn't want to find it funny. I just wanted it to be what it was. And that was, you know, this, is it or isn't it? Is it yeah. real? Is it a dream? Don't we don't know. But it's there. there are comedy moments and I don't know. So I was disappointed. Yeah. Because I wanted, ba- I wanted it to be more. Badly directed and yeah. badly, badly conceived in terms of style. But good acting. Yeah, they I mean, could yeah. have made it so much more unbearably watchable. Nigel Neal's name would have got that cast. Yeah. Because those were top TV actors of that time. Top popular TV actors. You know, it wasn't a bunch yeah. of unknowns. All of them, yeah. they're not names that you would think are famous or that even we would now, but they were absolutely, those people were in loads of stuff at that time. Mm-hmm. And they, as someone would have said, Nigel Neal, the Quatermass guy, which Quatermass, I can't tell you what a legend that is in this country, especially no, really at that is. time. People would have, you know, they would have, um, those actors would have remembered it being on. Well, they, they even gone, cast oh the God. aliens from Quatermass in this. They what? <laughs> <laughs> the, you didn't see it all the way through. The ants, the alien oh, well, ants. Oh, the, they're in the very first in, shot. Yeah. They're in it yeah. throughout. They're yeah. they're the 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 bad guys that are the coming baddies. to take over Earth. Uh, right. And that's what the she's Miss Griffin is trying to get Des Kinvig to help her save the planet from the Zucks. Xux. Well, I'll tell, well, tell you what. If, if I was to sum up, totally this, sucks. It does. I was going to say, if I was to sum up this, this sucks. <laughs> yes. um, well, I'd give it. A, we've been making that joke before you said that. I know. Yeah. Well, I was, I was, I was trying to interject to, to make that joke, but then the joke had been Could made. Could I make that joke again? I want to make the joke before it was made by somebody else. Would you like me to re-edit this to make the joke first? Yeah, put me at the beginning. No, I give it. I give Just it a, start a one. Start the whole podcast out. This with, sucks. This sucks. This sucks. Um, yeah, I give it one star. It's, I just didn't enjoy it. Exclamation I can see, mark. I can see, yeah, exclamation mark. <laughs> I can see potential in it. I can see the potential there, as you said. But you know what? I sat back. I thought, I'm going to crack open a beer and watch some cracking telly. Oh, and that was your mistake. <laughs> that was my mistake. And then I you thought, put on the stone tape. and <laughs> Yeah, no, then I just put on more pie in the sky and had a really good oh, time. I'm, I'm doing X, Y, Y, man, carrying on oh, with this. I so tried good. watching Pie in the Sky. And I couldn't, I couldn't get through the first half of the first episode. <gasps> it's oh, it's I great. I think I'd let me hold you two guys apart. No, uh, I just <sighs> who was the guy in the with the table set? That was such a well, weird. You find it out. Okay, that, that, I'll that, keep that going. Is, I just it that was, is the that is that guy is the thread for the okay. whole series. I just it didn't none of that. I was like watching it, going okay. But anyhow, so enough about that. Sorry to but confuse sack, everybody. Sack, 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 sack that off. Just watch Cracker. Just okay. watch Cracker. You yeah, it will change your life All as right, it changed most Cracker. people in this country. What, Nick, uh, uh, how, how many exclamation marks did you say, Shelley? I, I haven't. I'm going to say two. Yeah. I'm going to oh. give it a little bit That's more. Really? Then huh? Benji, because like I said, acting good, plot concept, I liked. I Benji's just despised the laugh track. It made me crazy. Yeah. There was this, the part where he, and you probably didn't get to it here. There was a scene where she, uh, Miss Griffin brings in her suitcase to have him fix the latch, no. and there's a good. I don't. I felt like an hour, but maybe a couple <laughs> minutes of him opening it. Closing it, opening it, it not working, closing it. it. Just this constant, like over and over and over of him not, like opening and closing the suitcase, and, and the audience is like, <laughs> rolling on the floor laughing. And I was like, I'm finding it funny now, and I haven't even seen it. I'm being funnier than he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're funnier than Nigel Neal, let's face it. Yes. Shelly Dean, funnier than Nigel Neal. Yay. <clears throat> but I think yeah. most people are funnier than Nigel Neal was. Yeah, actually. that was... Ev- ev- evidently, evidently. I, I, funnily enough, I give it uh, two exclamation marks oh, okay. as well, um, because yeah, for similar reasons really. But I didn't, I didn't find it boring. I found it because I remembered watching it, and I kept See, thinking the, nostal- the nostalgia thing is yeah. definitely a I factor. I mean, I never loved it, but I was, I was intrigued by what I could remember and what, what I didn't remember. You know what I mean? So did that you make it all going. the way through all seven? Oh no no! I only well, I did think I was going to, but I got halfway through. I and win. It has to. Be, <laughs> oh yeah, I got halfway through episode two, and it has to be said that even though 
let's put it this way the quality of the picture we were watching was really not good and I, I felt like I don't know whether there are enough pixels in people's faces here for me to actually work out what's going on <laughs> so um, uh, yeah and but, there was a um, weird flashing light that kept happening that's right we sort of felt like yeah. we were being hypnotised <laughs> we might have liked it better if we'd watched it in pristine quality yeah. I can't help thinking or maybe not maybe that would have made it even worse yeah maybe the fuzziness fuzz- of it you, you didn't find anything of, of um, Nigel Neal's opinion of it afterwards you know, did he ever say what well, bloody mistake that was? Nothing. Really no, sorry, there is th- there is like not much at all that, that, is, speaks that volumes, survives on he... the internet. There's nothing in newspapers. I because I did my newspaper search, and that was the only article I could yeah. find. What do you reckon, Benji? Do you think he wanted to bury it? <laughs> well, why? What you know? Why would you want that blotting your reputation? The Guinness Book of Classic yeah. British TV claims that apart from Jeevan's performance. Uh, Kinvig was a huge disappointment. Science mm-hmm. fiction historian Brian Stableford dismissed Kinvig as very silly and echo- echoed Nichols' criticism of the show, calling the script ignorant and implying that science fiction fans are obsessed with UFOs. It's got a similarity. Oh, yeah, there is that thing that when people who who aren't into science fiction, when they write about sci-fi fans, they confuse them with UFO freaks. Right. They think sci-fi fans believe that we're being visited by people from outer space and that there's a big difference between that and I've seen many really quite intelligent shows make that mistake Uh, when you go to a Doctor Who convention you don't find loads of people who think that aliens are about to come and take us away you just find bunches loads of people who love a crazy show and like dressing up in the costumes about one alien who we want to come and take us away yeah maybe but no people don't generally (laughs) believe it I mean, even one of my favourite films, Galaxy Quest, it sort of postulates that the fans of, as it were, Star Trek or Galaxy Quest in the movie, that they believe it's all true. Yeah. Like there's that beautiful moment when they radio the fan and he says, uh, you know, I just want to tell you. He says, I know, I know it's just a show. He goes, it's all true. I knew it. I knew it. You know, <laughs> yeah. if someone told me all of Doctor Who was true, I'd think they were mad. You know, yeah. it is. I knew it! <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> and on that bombshell, uh, thank you so much. We've got to talk about what we're doing next week. Mm. Can I make the call straight away? Yes. Yeah, uh, we, we mentioned earlier in the emails about um, somebody asked about Jonathan Creek. Uh, I think that would be uh, right up your uh, Strasser, Shelley. I think you'd enjoy that. Okay. Um, so I think Jonathan Creek is the way to go. Okay. Sounds so good. So we'll be to seeing me. you next week. Where we do Jonathan Karahik. So we'll be seeing you from Menji from Menji from Benji B, it's good B. Uh from me, Shelly, it's goodbye. But first, do you fancy some Benji and Nick show merch? Head over to NicholasBriggs.com slash shop to pick some stuff up. Bye. Nice. That was uh, the merch from, alarm. I, I feel like an anticlimax. Uh, yeah, it's bye. goodbye from me. <laughs> bye. Pressing stop now, Kachunk. Nice whistles.